Uh, Bash of Berlin happened, and I think every who won the predictions for y'all because I think it was like close. I think yeah. everybody had the same one. I think Eve, I think Eve picked Unholy Union like I did, and I think that was the only thing he got wrong. I'm almost certain that I picked 100% correctly. I'm 99% sure. I think you did. So, yeah. Honestly, I, think- I don't I don't know. I didn't even know what day it was today. So, we can do this right now. Uh Cody Eve Manny Co- uh Cody Eve Manny Chris pick Cody. Mm-hmm. Cody uh, Manny pick Terra Twins or whoever. Yeah. Eve and Chris picked Liv and Dom. I don't I don't know who won the match. I'm sorry. Uh Terra Twins. Oh, so Cody and Manny point undefeated there. so far. Okay. Cody, Manny, Chris, dark and lovely. Okay. And I know they won. Can I yep, just yep. say I didn't so I was watching Raw and mm-hmm. then they, you know, in the little opening, they showed up with the titles. Like I was like drooling and clapping like I was retarded. <laughs> like I was Yo, like, you, gotta, you gotta mute. You gotta mute. No, no, we're on that. no. Yeah. We're not muting nothing. <laughs> You are oh, I was so excited to see this. Is th- we do not do this on mid cards and catering, ladies and gentlemen. We just Sorry. allude to certain things. You know, I find it funny how you know I make one tweet saying you know Sierra, Toronto, Raptor, Anaheim, <laughs> Pierre, and it just makes it on this podcast. You know, but hey, yeah, you know, just wild out, bro. Hey oh, man, look, God. but and white and lovely did not win. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Eve chose, uh, so <laughs> congrats to Dark and Lovely. Uh, Cody Eve Manny Chris chose Punk, and Cody Eve Manny Chris chose Gunna. I love how Eve isn't here, and the Rachismo is still just—it's perfect. It's still flowing, like it's—it's it's great. Um, yeah, I, I just kind of felt like I kind of felt like Bianca and Jay don't need these titles. And it's not even a bad thing. I just don't think they – I think they're past this at this point. But yeah, if they're going to try to, like, hold this over them to, like – not hold it over them, but, like, keep them with these titles until it's, you know, maybe Rumble or something like that, okay, I guess. I mean, maybe Bianca's waiting on Charlotte Flair. I don't know. I just – I was like, do they really need these titles? Yes. Okay. All right. Here's why. You ready? Mm-hmm. Number one, just want to point out, I did win the predictions. You did. Even though me and Cody tied uh, technically. Number two, mm-hmm. there's only certain people in wrestling today that don't need a title. And who are those people? John Cena. Randy Orton. Okay. That's it. Everybody else should be fi- like going hard and trying to win a title. And and I wouldn't even be at, be mad at John Cena winning a title. That's like <sighs> saying that's like saying, "Oh my God, Cody Rhodes is so over right now. He doesn't even need a title." They did it for a fucking year, Manny. <laughs> Exactly. They did this for a whole year. That's what What I'm trying to tell you. Nobody. I don't want to hear nobody that isn't an absolute legend. I don't want to hear them in the same sentence as they don't need the title right now. They're so over. Bianca and Jade need the titles because they are the faces of the women's division right now. If you had to go, who do people know that don't really watch? They will tell you they've seen Bianca, or they would be they would look at Jade and be like, "That woman's a star." I get that, and I'm, I ain't disagreeing with that. I so, had no idea that White and Lovely had any. I didn't even know they were the tag team champs until the predictions episode. I was sitting there, and I was like, "I've never seen these women a day in my life." And they're I like you. You're a good captain. I like you. I, <laughs> I like you. <laughs> That was not a joke when Eve was telling me who they were during that episode. Like they, I I can't tell you that they're entertaining or not, but I can tell you that if you're if you're going into the brand new year because it's September now, mm-hmm. 
and you're going into the new deals with you know USA Network getting SmackDown Netflix. and Fox and ne- and Netflix getting um Raw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need faces that are gonna bring in people, and then they'll be like, oh, these are the champions. They look at Bianca Belair and and Jay Cargo, and they go, yes, these are champions. They're not gonna look at. I don't even know their name. You call yourself a wrestling journal. You call yourself okay. All right. Yes, but they're not. (laughs) What What are the names? Uh, the Unholy Union. That's not even a good tag team name. The Unholy Union. Get the fuck out of here. And you're telling me that when you turn on Netflix and you see the ad, the the little Mm -hmm. promo picture of because they're gonna have all the champions or or Mm -hmm. all the phases of the company. You're going to look at Unholy Union on that cover and go, I want to know more about them. No, you're not going to want, you're not going to do that at all. Okay. Come all on. right. Let's Manny, be realistic. Manny, besides John Cena, besides CM Punk, somebody like that, name me some of your favorite wrestlers when you were growing up. Batista. Okay. Um, Let's see. Great Batista, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie great, Guerrero, Great Kali. No, I was not Jimmy a fan. Wang Yang. <laughs> Jimmy Wang Yang was was definitely up there. Paul, um, Paul London, Brian Kendrick, okay. Jeff Hardy. Okay. The Look, Undertaker. Okay, let's. That. Okay, you just said two prime names right there: Jeff Hardy and The Undertaker. Now, Jeff Hardy held IC titles, right? But look at how many years Undertaker was just flip-flopping championships because he honestly didn't need him because he was the Undertaker, right? I'm not calling Bianca Belair the Undertaker. I'm just saying when you headline that many WrestleManias, when you are literally that woman, right? I don't think you just necessarily have to have these titles. It's not a bad thing. It's not like they're the titles are beneath them or anything of that nature. I just think that they have been doing such a good job especially the last year since triple h has been in you know creative where guys who don't have championships are still booked very well i mean my fa- one of my favorite matches over that weekend was drew mcintyre cm punk right drew mcintyre held a championship for literally five minutes and 46 seconds brother and he's still being booked like a motherfucking star. I don't think he has to have a championship. So that's what I mean by that. It's like, it's not a demeaning thing toward Bianca Belair or Jade. I just think that it's okay if they don't have it, as long as they have a good feud to go into. But if they felt like they couldn't build up a proper good feud for those two without the titles, then I'll fall back. You know, that's and, just where it is. And I'm going to tell you this, Bubba, they can't build up a good feud without them titles. Okay. Because they're listen okay. that who who has more I want to say clout, but I don't feel like clout is the right word. Clout, maybe even or these are these are words that like describe what I want to ask. Okay, but I, I'm, I don't I'm have the rolling. right word. For I'm rolling. It. Who has what? Who, who has more clout, notoriety, or with like people looking and being like, damn, that's a star between Bianca Belair and Bailey? Man. It... <laughs> okay. I get what you're saying, bro. But at the same time, this is a this is a character thing. This is a for not for you because i respect you and i respect this podcast for a lot of people if we keeping it a buck it's a looks thing too so it's unfortunately i'll be the one to stand out here and say it so i get it like it, it is it's, it is what it is you know bianca is a once in a lifetime generational athlete and i understand that so i'm not taking anything away from bianca belair I just think that it's okay if she didn't have the belts. But at the same time, the reason I say this is because realistically, other than Pure Fusion Collective, which is, you know, the, you know, those three, 
we really haven't seen any new tag teams since they've held the titles. And I feel like they're probably going to run through the same tag teams again. So, you know what? I'll put it to you like this, man. I'll, and I think I broke this down to somebody. It's like, you remember when there was the two man power trip? When it was Triple H and Stone Cold? Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. And yeah, I know I might be predating you just a little bit. I'm showing my age right now. But all right. Remember, they held those titles and then Triple H got hurt and then they had to reshuffle, you know, tag, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Who in 2001 would you have believably said, damn, they could really beat? Stone Cold Steve Austin and Triple H as a tag team, right? And that's where I feel like the problem is with the women's tag division right now because as much as I love what they're doing, this is literally like the equivalent of that with those two. And it's like, who is believably going to do this? The only way you can get this off of them is you have to do what you did before, which is a multi-team match that they don't get pinned in or you have to do like a fucking ladder match or you have to do, you know, when they finally turn on each other. But other than that, it's like for me, it's like, damn, bro, like I'm really supposed to believe that Caden Carter and Katana Chance are going to be the ones to like do it. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's like it's tough when you have two you know crazy like a like a crazy formation like that because it's like dog who's gonna top it and i truly don't know so that's why i'm like i don't know if they need those titles but that's the job of triple h that's the job of creative to find a way for us to believe that they can lose me i'm not believing anybody's fucking beating them dogs so yes like, listen yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now you don't have to worry about who's gonna beat them until after the new year all right after you think January they hold it that long you think they hold it till okay? They, they are one hundred percent holding it for a good. Um, month. I'm gonna give it. Let's see. I don't know who, so I I don't don't give me. I'm not gonna lie on here, but let's do over under. So you say January. I say. I say November. End of November Survivor Series. I say Survivor Series. All right. But just know this is like not barring injury or anything like that. Yeah, no, 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 uh KO decided not to turn. That was pretty interesting. Uh it wasn't for KP. He kind of predicted that would yeah. happen. He said I it mean, on, the, uh, on the pod. He said, he said it perfectly. Like yeah. I that's the thing about watching wrestling long enough to know if that show, if that's what opens the show, they're not gonna give you you're not gonna see Cody Rhodes losing the opening of a show, bro. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen. So in order for you to believe that's going to happen, you need to have that be the main event because you want to have. And we're going to talk about that later because that happened with No Mercy as well, because I saw people talking about that. And but anywho, yeah, KO and Cody had a, had a decent match. Um, uh, part of me feels like this is going to lead to either a triple threat or like maybe another match between the two soon. Because he kind of like, you could see like he was this close to turning, but he's just like, eh, so I don't know what their goal is. And I don't know if they want to rush Cody and Randy so soon, especially after Randy was just in a World Heavyweight Championship match. I don't know. They just want to alley-oop that shit to him. So we'll see. But um, a great way to open up the card. And then, of course, uh, you got Punk and Drew, which was pretty interesting, too. Um, Punk just kept whooping his ass and just kept hitting him with GTS after GTS after GTS after <laughs> GTS. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then I don't know why that man kissed that bracelet after it was just on Drew McIntyre's nuts, but I mean, <laughs> this, this is the sick shit that people do. Um, I don't get it, but uh and yeah, then you know after what i don't really you know what i don't really care for in wrestling 
shoot the, stra- the strap match. I don't know what's wrestling obsession with this goddamn match. Do you not care about the sh- sh- okay? Because sometimes people can like okay. Because you know originally it was the bull rope match, and then mm-hmm. it turned into the strap match. So do you care more for the bull rope idea where it's like we're just chained to each other and we got to fight, or do you are you saying just in general you don't care? Period. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I care for the the whole idea of the match. Like I remember, didn't before they used to have like lights on the on the turnbuckles and then you had to tap it and then it would like light up red or green or some shit yeah, like that's that. what they did that's what they brought back because like this over the weekend yeah yeah so when when that was happening i remember watching as a kid because i feel like jbl jbl and eddie definitely did mm-hmm. it i'm, 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 I'm gonna eddie cut you off respectfully yeah and was umaga and john cena in one i think so i want to say it's that's this the strap match was definitely a staple like in in your prime uh UPN SmackDown era for sure like it definitely was I, I it would not be denied I <laughs> don't know why say. like I don't understand <laughs> what like I know it's probably like a southern thing I feel like they probably use it a lot in the in the territory days I mean it was a bull rope match it was a yeah. bull rope match for sure so, but it didn't have the it didn't have the it was just yeah, you just I mean, his ass, and that's the match. You know, has some good matches that you can go look up. Uh, Terry Funk, Terry Funk has some great matches like that. Him and Mick Foley have some great yeah. ones like that. For so, sure. I, I, I'm gonna figure out why the hell people love the goddamn strap match. Hey man, I mean, look, bro. It, hey, look, nothing. Look, if, you can only do so many steel cage matches, bro. So you know, you got to whoop a nigga ass. You know, Sam. Put it around his wrist. Yeah. Drag him. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the fun part when you just like, like when he threw Punk over and then he was like trying to pull him back up. Like, that's, Mm -hmm. that's always fun. So, you know, you can get creative with it. It's just, I can't, I can understand like the, the touch and the, the, you know, turnbuckle can be a little goofy. But I mean, at the same time, you're literally putting the damn strap around your wrist and like, okay, we're locked in, brother. Like, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But, I enjoyed the match. I thought Punk finally getting the damn win was about damn time. So, yeah, I was. I ain't gonna lie though. Since we talking about like 06 and shit, it would have been fire if Punk would have like pulled out the uh, the what's the what was his move the uh, Anaconda Vice. Oh yeah, if he would did the Anaconda Vice with the strap. That should have been fire. You know what I'm saying? Just like choke Drew out with it. Mm-hmm. That would have been fire. So, yeah. But other than that, um, the only other matches on the card were uh, yeah, Terra Twins. That was it. Yeah, yeah, Terra Twins. We all we all knew that was happening. And then Gunther, Randy Orton. Um, Gunther, we, we all knew Gunther was going to retain. That was just a matter of if he was going to actually like chop him down or like how what was the finish going to be. I like that they're using a lot of like you know rear naked chokes and like sleeper holes now where it's like hey he didn't tap out he's a tough son of a bitch his mm-hmm. body just gave up on him like yeah so shout out to randy orton for being able to do this at this age because at this big old age yeah back to the gills that's a big motherfucker bro <laughs> it's a big motherfucker <laughs> so yeah shout out to randy orton yeah um like you said, infamously, uh, it's nothing like getting some good Chinese food on a Saturday afternoon, watching a PLE. I'm loving this shit because, look, for somebody to be outside sometimes, I like being able to watch this at 12 and I have to worry about, damn, I got to leave and come back and watch this shit because I got to go outside. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm loving the, the midday shit. Listening to the black and table. I like your guys' style. 